All right, <clears throat> here we are, meditation day 123 from this day, the 16th of June, um, originally written 10 years ago, commemorated here 10 years later. This is pages 204 and 205 from the book, Being and Learning, where this material was ultimately published. I'm commemorating it. Uh, as a way of going back and thinking about both the form and the content of what I wrote and a lot of um, what I've been making commentary on in the blog where this is being collected both the videos and the post and a lot of the commentary has been focusing on the, the, f the form of the writing in the poetic and phenomenological form, um, but also a lot of meta commentary. Um, and in fact, in the post that I wrote today, <clears throat> I talk a lot about um, the faith that's behind the project, that was behind the project, the faith that uh, gave me the force and power, if you will, to move forward each day. Um, and also, I talk a little bit about in the commentary how what I wrote uh, very much conveying uh, in a certain sense that faith so there's a kind of an epistle quality to it so if you want to get more context and think along with me a little bit further check out Duarte Being and Learning I, that's the name of the blog on Google blog so here's the meditation from this day ten years ago today Diminishment or emptying of the self prepares the way for the stewardship that is the devotion to the Tao, the care for being. This destruction or diminishment occurs with the practice of meditation, with the releasement of willing, with the renunciation of the juridical voice, and the announcement of the arrival of the ineffable. This announcement is the evocative conveying of wisdom, the pointing to what is beyond, the indication of the actuality of possibility, the sheltering of freedom. In turn, the one who devotes himself to the Tao is the one who bears the tidings of the relationship between being and learning. The bearing of this news, this announcement, is identified in the comportment of the sage, her poetic dwelling that we identified as humility. Humility is manifested to all the world in the teacher's offering of teachability, in his offering of himself as most capable of learning. To bear oneself in this manner is to be known by, have a kindred relationship with being. To have a kindred relationship with being is the essence of learning. Kindred means having a common source, related. To be with being is to be devoted to the Tao, to learning. If learning unfolds from the emptying of the self, this diminishing is simultaneously the releasement of the I into the I Thou. Humility is the name for the bearing of the one who is bounded in this relationship. The name for the steward, humility. Humility is comportment the comportment of the one who submits himself to the other, who submits and entrusts himself. In this sense, to be a learner is to be devotional, to be de dedicated and wholly applied to the task at hand. To be a learner is to be wholly applied to the task of stewardship, to the task of cultivating the abode of poetic dwelling, to the care of the other, to be steadfast with openness. <laughs> The diminished self is the emptied self, the self enjoined in dialogic intersubjectivity. When we say learning is the modality of devotion, we say it is bounded by the gathering directive of the word. To be bounded is to receive a born, quote, a limit, a goal, unquote. This born is conveyed by the bearing of the sage, the comportment of humility, that guides the building of the poetic dwelling. 
poetic dwelling, the dialogic gathering of the many, is the born itself. Openness is the born that is born in upon the learner. When a born is born in upon, it becomes the bearing of the one who has received it. The born that is born in upon becomes one's firm conviction. This is the devotional modality of the learner who bears the mindfulness of the steward, who is the cultivator of peace and freedom. Mindfulness arrives with the reception of the born of openness, the gift of teachability received by the sage. To receive the gift of teachability of openness itself is to be a bearer of mindfulness, to convey the direction, the way of wisdom. The bearer is the one who carries and supports, and the one who endures the silence of painstaking listening. To bear the way of the born is to gather others along the boundless boundary, the path of silence. To bear the way of the born of openness is to practice meditative thinking and heed the gathering directive of the word, the beckoning of language that directs the experiential philosophy that builds, makes, creates, initiates, cultivates, and repairs. Experiential philosophy is the name for the learning that is attuned to the appeal of language that signifies the not yet, what is always already beyond. To be devoted to learning is to be ready for the unforeseen, to seek the unforeseen, and thereby to listen to the appeal of language, to the word. But to authentically receive this invocation and thereby to be devoted to learning is to become most active in the building of poetic dwelling, the poetic dwelling of peace and freedom, which is to care for being. To be a philosopher, then, is to be devoted to the construction of a polyphonic community, a dialogic gathering of many, and thereby to be seized by and devoted to wisdom. To be de one devoted to learning is the lover of wisdom, the philosopher firmly committed to openness itself. To bear this commitment is to be enjoined with others in the purposeful wandering that is the way of wisdom, the path of silence, the Tao. Quote, of all the words yet spoken, none comes quite as far as wisdom, which is the action of the mind beyond all things that may be said. Wisdom is the oneness of the mind that guides and permeates all things. Fragments 18 through 19. As Heraclitus indicates, experiential philosophy is the mind manifestation of wisdom that has, be that has borne in upon the one who has become attuned to the ineffable. To receive the born of openness is to hear the silent call of being, to hear the word, and to be gathered together in the unity that is the dialogic learning community. Wisdom appears as the conscientization that is mindfulness. Mindfulness of this being together in the building of the poetic abode. This building is the action of the mind beyond all things that may be said the arrival of the ineffable that appears at the gathering of the many into a dialogic learning community. To welcome the ineffable is to be devoted to learning, to bear the born of openness. And that's how it ended on the 16th day of June 2004. Once again, check out the blog Duarte Being and Learning for more context and for where all the videos and the commentary is, are gathered.